Well, if you had any doubt that it was March, Cinderella gets it done on a Sunday. CBS senior golf writer Kyle Porter joining us to talk about the bracket buster. Kurt Kitayama with a triple on the card, no less KP holds off some serious horses. Three time runner up last year gets it done here. First PGA Tour win in the face of the world's best. How do you make sense of this Sunday for Kitayama? Well, it, it was a fascinating uh, storyline on Sunday. You know, we get all these, you and I have talked about this show, we get all these sort of templates on a Sunday afternoon. Sometimes you get stars battling one another, like we saw at Kapalua where John Rahm chases down Colin Morikawa. Uh, sometimes you throw in, like we got today, where you've got a kind of an underdog, a long shot out in front, and you've got all these stars coming up behind, right? And so he triples nine, and you're like, okay, well, that's kind of it. We're going to get Rory, Scheffler, Spieth. Hatton, Hovland, all these huge names coming out behind him to kind of take over. I, I, Joe, I couldn't be more impressed with mm. what he did over those last nine holes. You know, he goes seven straight pars. He gets up and down from 214 on the 71st hole of the golf tournament uh, to make a birdie and take the lead. That's just, that's pretty extraordinary stuff for somebody that's never won on the PGA Tour. That's the birdie on 17, the 71st hole right there. And it just, it doesn't usually happen like that, you know, to go out and your first win is uh, what has been the best field of the year so far, the Arnold Palmer Invitational. So I, I was just super impressed by the way that Kitayama kind of hung on and, and closed it out against some big dogs at the end there. Yeah, it was at no point too tall of a task from Saturday on uh, and even obviously Thursday and Friday for Kurt Kitayama who collects his first career PGA Tour victory. Maybe broader strokes here on the new tour setup, KP. Kitayama proof that it's not the strictly haves and have nots when it comes to these elevated events. What does a winner like this at a place like this against a leaderboard like this mean when we're trying to make sense of this new setup? Yeah, it's a good question. It's one that I've, I've thought about quite a bit. Yeah, how about this? 5.1 mm. million versus uh, 2.8 before the season. I, I, Joe, I think what happens at these big big time events, these designated events, is simply that you get some context for what's happening so no matter who wins it's just better contextualized i, I said this earlier in the week it, it, you know even though the fields at bay hill and riviera and phoenix they're not demonstrably different from a year ago you know they're, they're better but they're not crazy better and yet simply because the pga tour has said hey this is a designated event this is one of the 13 that matter on, on the pga tour season it just feels like a bigger deal. And so when you get a Kurt Kitayama, I think in years past, if Kurt Kitayama wins the Arnold Palmer Invitational, you could do this thing where maybe you write it off, you say, oh, well, some stars weren't there or whatever. It, and now it, it's this real David versus Goliath type storyline where there's nowhere to write it off. It just is what it is. And I think that's really good for the tour, for the league. Uh, for the fans of the league because it just it provides so much context to kind of what's going on at, at Bay Hill and, and every other stop that the shooter goes to. Yeah, it was uh, David versus Goliath versus Goliath versus Goliath versus Goliath. <laughs> uh, they were seven wide coming home, KP. Looked like anyone's game at multiple different moments. Let's go on Rory first here. Sort of waited in the weeds on the front nine, made his move, and then squandered that opportunity at 18 to get to that nine deep number that would have ultimately, I don't know, butterfly effect, gotten him into a playoff with Kurt Kitayama. How do you characterize the volatility here on the day and really the week for Roars? Well, you know, I think he is, he's sort of the, uh, you know, we talk about Rom being the buoy. Mm -hmm. I think Rory is the buoy of Bay Hill, right? He, he, Cause he, <laughs> he shoots 73 on Thursday and you're like, okay, that's probably not gonna happen with the quality of this field. And then he goes, I can't remember which order, 69, 68, 70. And you're like, man, how, how is he in this on Sunday afternoon? He just, this is a, this is a golf course where he just keeps coming and uh, I thought it was it was really impressive. I, I don't know that he had his best stuff, but I think I think it's important, Joe, going into the Players Championship, going you know heading into April and in, into uh, into the Masters at Augusta National. He's got a little juice now. He's got a little momentum that he didn't have after Phoenix and after Riviera. So, you know, are you going to write Rory off at the Players and the Masters, even if he finishes T25 at Bay Hill? Probably not, but. Uh, I think this is a good kind of jump start to what has been a mediocre season so far for him. Yeah, flashed a little bit here this week out at Bay Hill, a place like you said, he loves to golf his ball. Uh, I would like to first establish this before we go any further, just as a safe place to speak freely about Jordan Spieth. I mean, Pastor motion <laughs> sickness medicine. He made ones he thought he missed. He missed ones he thought he made. At times, the solid putter insulated bad ball striking. At others, a balky putter squandered chances. 
How do you explain this sort of variability and outcome? Not day to day or tournament to tournament, but seemingly this shot so to good. shot when it comes to Jordan Speed. <laughs> Yeah, th this is so good. I, you know, Joe, I'm shocked that he he plays great <laughs> at the roller coaster stop at, at in Orlando yeah. on the PGA Tour. You know, that's that's really shocking that that's where <laughs> that's where he's thrived. I, you know, I, I think this is I think this is an encouraging week for Jordan Spieth. You know, he he has traditionally not been great at the Players. Obviously, he has been great at the Masters, but I think. You know, it, he putted it better this week. It wasn't it wasn't uh, like an all-time putting performance for him, but he's kind of low-key been hitting the golf ball really well, and uh, he did so again this week. So I think, you know, and he talked about this a little bit. I just blazed through his transcript right before we came on here. Uh, but he talked about how, uh, you know, he's, he's he kind of felt like this was coming. He's been hitting it well. Obviously, the numbers bear that out. He said he's been putting it better than the numbers say, which I'm always dubious when guys are saying that, especially with reactions uh, like you just saw where he's walking <laughs> in putts that he thought he missed by a foot. So I, I think it's a little – it's different than Rory because Spieth hasn't been at the level that Rory's been at for the last year now. Uh, but it, it is, again, a little bit of juice for Augusta, uh, and, and it's it, good or bad. I, I think Spieth has kind of talked me into thinking he's going to win the Masters again in 2023. Uh, that obviously changes, and the needle moves by the shot <laughs> that we see out of Jordan Spieth <laughs> and others. Uh, I'm sure the Twitter feed of Kyle Porter will be wrought with such information here in the days to come. <laughs> we'll have to keep an eye on that lower back of Jordan Spieth, too. He did clutch at it at a number of times here as he tries to uh, round into form for Masters time and here more readily for the Players' Championship. That's what we have up next, KP. I want your thoughts. Obviously going to be another stacked field, one of the best we'll get this season at what we consider sometimes the fifth major. What are your expectations for the players? Who are you earmarking? What are you hoping to see as we do crescendo towards the major season? Well, it's going to be really interesting, Joe, because TPC Sawgrass is a golf course where uh, we see so many different people contend at that golf. I mean, Jim Furyk is is fighting Rory McIlroy three or I guess it's four years ago now when when Rory went on to I believe it was, that was the year Rory went on to win. And you're like Jim Furyk from out of nowhere, right? We see so many different types of players at TPC Sawgrass. It's it, there's a lot of variation in that sense, and I think that's going to be so different from what we've seen so far in 2023 you've seen what have you seen over the first three months it's been Scheffler it's been Rom it's been Scheffler it's been Rom it's been a little bit of Rory um, and, and so you know are you going to get those same kind of three guys up there again you throw Max Homa in there he's been really good so far this year are you going to get those same three or four guys or are you going to get some kind of from out of nowhere Kevin Kisner types uh you know, vying for that championship. I, I think I think the post championship week is going to be a, a celebration of sorts. You know, this has been a really successful, I think, three month stretch for the tour in terms of the designated events. We got Rama Morikawa at Kapalua. Uh, we got Rama and Scheffler throwing some Nick Taylor at Phoenix. We got Rama and Homa and uh, throwing some Keith Mitchell at Riviera. And then we got Kurt Kitayama holding off, you know, Murderer's Row behind him at Bay Hill. It's been the designated events, unless like Tiger won all of them, they couldn't have gone better <laughs> for the PGA Tour. So I think there's going to be a, a real celebration of what's going on with the tour next week at uh, at TPC Sawgrass. There is no doubt about it. The golf is good right now, and nobody better to break it down than our Kyle Porter. Thank you, KP. And don't forget, there's only one place to be for all your tour needs. That's with Kyle Porter and our team on the First Cut podcast. Round by round, day by day, everything you need to know off tour. It's the premier pod in golf. Download, subscribe, and enjoy the First Cut Podcast. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.